people will find any reason to blame somebody other than themselves on why they are losing at a casino table game. So yesterday was a Saturday, and I was at a $10 blackjack table, which was miserable on a Saturday. And I had a lady, it was just me and her at the table, and she was playing two spots, $50 in hand. So she was betting $100 each time. And it was a new shoe, and a lady walked up and asked if she could sit down. And I said, yeah, it's a new shoe, sit down, come on, get in. And uh, she bought in for $100, which is typical at a $10 table. And the lady that was already there was continued to play two spots at $50 a spot, $100 a bet. The lady who just bought in for $100 started playing $10 a, a, a bet in one spot. She lost the first, like, two or three hands. She goes, I'm going to set out if that lady over there is going to play two hands. Like, that lady playing two hands didn't cause you to lose. And she's been playing two hands this entire time. You just came to the table. Why are you upset at this lady? And they proceeded to get into an argument. You can't play two hands. You're changing the cards all up, and it's causing me to lose. I'm going to sit out if you're going to play two hands. And the lady was like, okay, fine, sit out. I don't care what you do. I'm going to continue to enjoy myself with my money and play two hands because that's what I want to do. And the $10 lady looked at me and she goes, are you going to do anything about this? I said, no. What do you want me to do about it? She can play two hands if she wants. It's in the rules. She was here before you. She's betting more than you. The game's designed for you to lose. Like, why are you upset? So the lady sat out for a few hands, and uh, then she came back in, and the lady who was playing two hands dropped down to one hand, and then the lady's like, you're just going to let her flip-flop like that from two hands to one hand? I was like, yeah, I am. Like, she can play however she wants. You can play two spots if you'd like, but my point is, everybody wants to blame somebody else for their losses. Like, you didn't lose because she was playing two spots. And if she was only playing one spot and you lost, would you be all complained about her? Well, if she wasn't here, I'd, I would be winning. Like, her playing two spots could help you just as much as it could hurt you. And then for you to get all upset, three hands in, you lost $30. $30. Bucks. If you can't go to the casino and lose $30, you shouldn't be there. Every single game is designed for you to lose. The lady wasn't counting cards. So, betting $10 every single hand, you can win. It can happen. The swing can go into your favor somehow. But if you stay long enough and you never adjust your bet, you're going to lose. People think that counting cards makes the game beatable, and it does. But only if you adjust your bet a certain amount. If you're betting ten dollars, you have to have a bet spread of like eight to ten or twelve. So plus one, bet twenty, plus two, bet thirty, plus three, bet forty. You know, plus ten, bet a hundred, bet a hundred and twenty. But if you just continue if you like if the count's in your favor and you only double your bet, you're still going to lose in the long run. Because you're gonna be playing through those negative counts unless you long in or back count like game is designed for you to lose. There's no way around it. The casinos aren't cheating. Yeah, if you're using advantage play, they might back you off. It's their right to do that. They don't have to let you play. It sucks. It's a shitty situation if you're counting cards and you get backed off and the casino's close to your house. Now you have to go somewhere else to count. Maybe they put you in a Griffin book. Maybe they put you in one of their little Indian casino books. Either way, you can't play there anymore. It sucks. And uh, every right has, or every business has the right to refuse business to whoever they want for whatever reason they want. That's how America works. So you should be happy that they can back you off. That just shows you that the game is beatable. If it wasn't beatable, they wouldn't back you off. Have you ever seen anybody get backed off a craps table? No, it doesn't happen. Unless they think you're cheating. Like if you're using a magnet to cheat, then yeah, they're going to kick you off a craps table. 
But if you're just winning a shitload of money at craps, they're not going to kick you off. Because the game is still designed for you to lose. There's no way to turn a craps table into your favor. And I don't want a bunch of comments about dice anymore. Because if you throw the dice the way the casino tells you to throw them, dice setting does not work. You have to hit the back wall. Now, if you throw the dice and it doesn't hit the back wall, sure, you can set the dice up in your favor. Or if you slide them, or if you spin them so that they're not tumbling. But if, as soon as it hits that back wall, you're done. Like, there's no setting the dice to hit little triangles in the wall and have them bounce the right way. It just doesn't work like that. Now, if we're playing Monopoly, yeah, I can set the dice and throw them and roll whatever number I want. If I want to land on free parking, I can set it to where I'm going to roll an 8, and chances are it's going to be a pretty fucking good chance that I hit it. But if you have to hit something that throws the dice in weird directions, you can't do it. And especially you're throwing the dice 10, 12, 14, 16 foot. Now, I'm stupid when I play craps. I set the, the dice, but I, I just do it because I'm superstitious, which is retarded. And... I know that as soon as it hits the back wall, it does whatever it wants, but it makes me feel better. But I know that it's not beatable. And, uh, so you should be happy that they can back you off of a blackjack table, because that shows that the game can be exploited, and if you're smart enough to add plus one and minus one, which half the people that come to the casino aren't, I would say 95% of the people that come into the casino aren't smart enough to figure it out, because they're dumb. We have people that come every single day and lose. Nine out of ten times, I would say. When if you were at the casino five days a week, because that's how many times I'm there, it's five days a week for work, and we get the same people every day. So I don't know, maybe they go there seven days a week. Why don't you learn how to count cards? If you're going to do something, like... Some people gamble for fun and they expect to lose, but these people that come there every day... They complain every single day about how they can't win. And I'm like, all right, cool. Then why are you still coming here? You come here every day, Bob. Like, find a different hobby. Collect baseball cards for something. Like, don't come to the casino, lose your money, and complain. I'm not a therapist. I don't care about your money. Like, if you want to come and play blackjack every single day, count cards. Figure out how to get the game in your advantage. I just don't, it, I don't understand it. I learned how to count cards, it took me like three days. It, well, like, it took me like ten minutes to fucking learn how to count cards and three days to get good at it. And I got good at it by betting weird amounts. I would bet $17.50 so that when all the cards are out on the table, the dealer had to break the bet down to pay it, leaving the cards out there longer so it gave me more time to figure out how to count them. Now I can deal cards, pay out, <coughs> count them, and do everything with no mistakes. I can hold conversations with three different people, keep the count in my head, pay blackjacks, pay everything out with zero mistakes. <coughs> it's not hard. I'm not a math genius. I'm not smarter than anybody else. I just like to be good at what I do. And if I enjoy playing blackjack, I'm going to try to do it as best as I can. Just like if I was a baseball player, I'd be in a batting cage every day trying to hit the ball better. So why come to the casino and lose day after day after day after day and complain? It just doesn't make any sense. I, look at all this snow. I probably shouldn't even be talking on my phone and driving or whatever. It's probably not the smartest thing I've ever done. But, and and all, all these comments I'm getting on roulette, like, they're not rigging the roulette wheel. There's not a magnet in the ball and a magnet in the wheel to suck the ball into one slot. The dealer pushes the wheel. The dealer flicks the ball or flips it or pushes it or however they want to get the ball going around the wheel. There's dealers that can throw the ball the same way every time and make it so that the ball spins around the wheel 22 times, or 17 times, or 15 times, or however many times they want it to go around, consistently every single time, and they can make it so the ball falls on the opposite side of the wheel of when they throw it. 
or on the same side of the wheel as when they throw it. Depends on how hard they throw it. And they can get good at pushing the wheel and getting the wheel to spin almost the same speed every time to where they can section a group of numbers, three, four, five numbers, and they can consistently hit that quadrant every time. And if you don't believe me, just go watch a, a good dealer on roulette that is getting tipped. They're gonna section the wheel. They're gonna throw the ball the same way. Because dealers work for tip. I make $6 an hour. I just got a 33 cent ways. I make like six seventeen dollars an hour. So if somebody's tipping me, I'm gonna throw the ball the same way every fucking time. Because all I care about is the money in that tip jar. I don't care about the casino's money going out to you. I care about the money in my tip jar. And if you're a person that comes there every day and complains and doesn't tip, before I spin the ball, I'm gonna hold the ball for 15 seconds, and the next time I'm gonna hold it for three seconds, the next time I'm gonna hold it for 30 seconds, and I'm gonna throw it differently. I'm gonna I'm gonna chuck it, you know, 100 miles an hour the first spin, let it go around the wheel 30 times, and the next spin I'm gonna let it go around 10 times, or you know, like I'm gonna do stuff to try to make it so that you can't guess where the ball is going. But if you're tipping and you're waiting until after I throw the ball to place your bets, so I know that if I release the ball at zero. It's a good chance it's gonna hit the double zero on the other side of the wheel and you can bet the three numbers next to the double zero and win. And you're tipping, I'm gonna throw the ball the same way every time. Because all I care about is the money going in that tip box. But they're not cheating. The game is designed for you to lose. Dealers are supposed to push the wheel a different speed every time. They're supposed to throw the ball a different speed every time. They're supposed to hold on to the ball and release it at a different time every time. That's just so people can't section. It's not cheating to section, and it's not cheating for the dealers to have to pu push the, the wheel at different speed. The game is set up for you to lose. It's designed for that way. So, the casinos don't need to cheat to build million, hundred million, two hundred million dollar expansions on their casino. They don't need to cheat to do that. We have a smaller casino there's 33 tables at our casino on day shift you might get 15 of them open and the drop for day shift is usually about a hundred thousand dollars in an eight-hour shift with 20 tables or 15 tables the casino makes a hundred thousand dollars or they drop a hundred thousand dollars and most of the time there's only a few people that went I worked at the casino for a good two weeks to, to a month before I saw anybody win. Now I was on a lot of five and ten dollar tables like new dealers are. And everybody plays till they lose. They bet five dollars every hand and they play until their hundred dollars is gone. You get people that bet twenty-five to a thousand dollars a hand, they they adjust their bet. They they get on they their streaks. Now I don't know if there's any math involved with streaks or if it's just a string of good luck. But we get people that come in there and they win fairly often and they're not counting cards because I count the cards when I deal them. And these people are still upping their bets in negative counts and they're winning. And that's possible. You can win 10 hands in a row in a negative count. It's not likely, but it's possible. It's also not likely to win 10 hands in a row in a positive count, but it can happen. And people win 10, 20, 30 thousand dollars. But, but not betting $25 at a time. They might start out betting $25 and then they go to 50 and 100 and 200 and 1,000. And they, and they just chunk bets out there randomly with no skill involved. And they get lucky. And another thing that drives me fucking bananas, people place their $15 bets with no information. They're not counting cards, right? And then they get a soft 19 versus 6, and they don't double it. No, 19 is good. Okay, well, you placed your bet with zero information. You finally received some information, and you choose to fuck it all up. Or people put their $15, $20 bet out there, get a pair of 6s versus 7. I'm not splitting that. I'm just going to hit it. Well, what are you doing? Or people that... I'll convince them to split their sixes. I'll be like, like as soon as they get a hand that they're supposed to split, I immediately push their cards apart. As in, like, a, a light suggestion that, hey, you might want to split these. Sometimes they listen, so they'll put another 20 bucks out there, or whatever I said. 
and they split them. So now they have two sixes, and then they get a five on them, or a four. And now I'm like, double down. And they're like, no, I'm not going to double down. Okay, well, if you weren't going to double down, then you shouldn't have split. Like, you were, the, the whole point of splitting is to hopes to get a double down. So when you got that five, you should be like, your mouth should be watering, you should be counting your chips, you should just put your extra 20 bucks out there and double down. But if you're not gonna double down, then don't fucking split the cards. How are you placing your bet with zero knowledge, and then you get the knowledge that you need, you gain a little bit of information, and you don't use that information to your advantage. Same thing with Ultimate Texas Hold'em or Casino Texas Hold'em. Whatever your casino calls it. You place your blind and your trips and your ante. All blind. The game is like a 5% house advantage before you see your cards. And then you get a hand like King-10. Well, now the game is in your favor. It benefits you to quad up. So you should, if you're betting $5, you should bet $20 behind. Instead, you look at your cards and you check. Why are you playing this fucking game that's designed for you to lose if finally, when you get the game in your advantage, and it's beneficial for you to put as much fucking money out there as possible, you just don't do it. Three years ago, I lost on King 10. Dealer had pocket aces. I can't plot down on that. And then you check, and then nothing hits on the flop. It's a fucked up, weird flop. And then the river comes, in the turn, nothing. And you're like, well, I got 10 king 10, so now I'm gonna play. And you put your $5 out there, the dealer doesn't qualify, so he pushes your money back. You don't have trips, so you lose your trips bet. You still beat the dealer, and you ended up winning the hand and lost. I see it all the time. You win the hand and lose. It's just like, why do you guys? Wake up in the morning and say, I know what I'm going to go do. I'm going to go give the casino my money. And I'm going to do it at a higher rate than I should. Get out of my way. Get out of the way. Like, as soon as you get the information that you've been looking for, the game's in your favor, you fuck it all up and it drives me nuts. Like, I just... 